That's not love, that's selfish, that's foolish, it's a waste of life, it's a waste of time. We live in a day and age where people will take their hard-earned money and literally hand it over to a bartender to destroy their brain cells and liver. I'm a bartender! This is no right, this isn't the right way to live. This is a foolish way to live. This isn't smart. We live in a society where people will take their hard-earned money to the convenience store, grocery store, gas station, and give it over to somebody so they can burn it. You're burning your money, and you're destroying your lungs. And you want to preach love while well, you give me cancer with your secondhand smoke. Not very loving of your neighbor, my friend. Hypocrisy is everywhere. Foolishness in the mind enables somebody to live this way. That's why you need the wisdom of Jesus to teach you how to live so you don't make these kind of silly, silly ways. That's what sin is. It's a silly way to live. It's a foolish lifestyle and it goes against God and it has eternal consequences that are terrible. But hey, it's fun. It makes me feel good in the moment. So you want to be foolish and live in the moment while ruining your eternity. My friends, that's why Jesus says, why gain the world and lose your soul? You don't have to gain that happy moment just to lose it all in the end. There's consequences. He's a holy God. He doesn't play games. But we live in a day and age where people just want to have fun. I want to, I want to have fun. I want to, have, I want to get drunk. But if people are paying money saying getting drunk's a good time. You think a hangover is fun? Jesus drank wine. The wine was not alcoholic, my friend. Jesus never got drunk. Drunkenness is a sin. Drunkards cannot inherit the kingdom of God, the Bible says. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 9 and 10, and Galatians chapter 5, 18 through 20. Drunkards cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You must be sober-minded. People are smoking weed, legalizing weed. Hey, hey, oh yeah, weed. It's medical. Look at all this research. It's medical. Yeah, look at all the research. Who's funding the research? I'm pretty sure there's no, there's no biased groups funding any forms of research. Yeah. Yeah, you know what it is? Oh, there's so many ways people have claimed to have treated their cancer naturally. Oh, but we need weed. No, because you want weed. Because you love your sin. Let's talk about medical marijuana. Medical marijuana. Medical mary. The medical death. Spiritual death. That's what it is. It's, 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 it's spiritual. You call it medicine, and it's the spiritual death. It thumbs your brain cells, it thumbs down society, and you call it a benefit. Yeah. There's so many other ways you can treat your cancer naturally, but no, nah, I want this one, bro. Let's legalize it, bro. Let's legalize medical marijuana, bro. Bob says be sober. Sober, bro. You gotta be sober, bro. See, that's what the devil did to Eve. Eve! It's okay. It's okay, Eve. It's okay. You can. You. It's okay. You can eat the fruit. In fact, there's benefits to eating that fruit. You know the devil did that. God said, "Don't eat the fruit, Adam and Eve. If you eat the fruit, it will kill you. I, I, it's going to be your death. You will die." God said. The devil said, "No, you're not going to die. It's good for you." The devil said, "In fact, you'll be like gods. You'll be able to see good from evil." That's the same kind of tactic the devil uses with medical marijuana. No, 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 no. It's good for you. It's, it's medical marijuana. It's good for you. It's like the fruit, Adam and Eve. It, it's good for you. Yo, Doc, you got a lithium battery in a polyester bag. Yeah, bro. Produced in factories that do a whole lot more damaging shit. While You're contradicting the Bible. Yeah. While contradicting the Bible. Did you sew your own clothes? Did you milk? And, and my friend, I'm feeding lots of people right now wisdom from God so they can live. That's what I'm doing. I'm using technology for God's glory to help. Watch out behind you, sir. So nice try, devil. Nice try trying to twist the wisdom of God. That's what the devil does in all of his children. They try to twist it and try to go and attack God's wisdom and his servants. That's what they do. It's very Christian. It is Christian. In fact, Jesus says in John chapter 8 to all the Jews in the synagogue, he says, you are children of the devil. Yeah, that's what Jesus said. That's what he said. Because you know what? Anybody who wants to go against the wisdom of God in the preaching is of the devil because that's what the devil wants. So you prove that you want to serve his will, not God's will. God's will is that the preaching goes on. God's will is that people get saved. That's what God wants. See, there's a devil. There's evil. There's evil. There's demons inside people. That's, a, that's the same excuse that the devil used to Eve that you use for medical marijuana today, folks. 
the same excuse, the same lousy garbage excuse. It's good for you. Eve, you can eat this fruit. It's medical. It's good for you. You need this. There's no other cure. It's good. God created marijuana. Why would God create a plant? Because man turned it into a drug. God didn't create beer. Man turned the hops into alcohol. God didn't create cocaine. Man turned the coca plant into cocaine. Because it's in the Bible. God didn't write the Bible. We can have a peaceful discussion. If anybody wants to talk peacefully, okay, we can have a peaceful discussion on the mic. Go back and forth. We can have a very peaceful discussion. Very peaceful. True. Very true. Do you want to talk on the mic? Okay. We can have a peaceful discussion, sir. No problem. No problem. Totally peaceful. If anybody wants to talk on the mic, we can peacefully share. We've been doing this for hours. We've had great conversations with people. Um, What's peaceful about calling Jews the children of the devil? Well, that was, no, I was quoting Jesus in John chapter 8. That's what Jesus... No, 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 no. I am a Semite, actually. I'm not an anti-Semite. In fact, Jesus says in John chapter 8, I was quoting what Jesus said. He said in John chapter 8 to those Jews in the synagogue at that time. You know why? It says they picked up stones and they wanted to kill him. That's what it says. What's that? No, 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 no. It's not just for him. It's for anybody who's evil who wants to sin and destroy and kill people with evil. Not That's what it is. You know, that's ultimately what it is. So, uh, of course, I'm not an anti-Semite. In fact, I am a Semite, so I find it pretty hard to be an anti-Semite if I'm a Semite. But either way, listen, listen. The wisdom of God is perfect. Okay, and if you don't want to understand it, that's your problem. That's your choice. You don't have to. You don't have to, all right? But that's your choice. Don't force that, that, that evil knowledge as if it's the truth. Because it's not. Mm -hmm. so, so what we have here, we have a society, we live in a day and age where people want to call evil good and good evil. And that's why God says, woe to him who calls evil good and good evil. Okay? Let's talk about you want to. Well, I don't. I don't want to talk about Trump. We can talk about. We can talk about sin and lifestyle choices today. We can have a peaceful discussion on the mic. We've been doing this for hours. We have great conversations with people. No, more and not than happy. only that, they despise the truth. Yes. So God gives them all the solution. Yes, the, the reprobate mind. But we try to help. Not everybody. There's hope. There's hope for everybody. We never know. So so so. So, so why why are we living in a day and age that legalizes medical marijuana? Why are we living in this day and age that, that wants to come out? I'm hating on sin, man. It's not just marijuana. Where does it say smoking marijuana is a sin? It is a sin. What about trying to tell other people what they should do with this kind of sin? Oh, uh, no, I'm telling you. You got no right to tell other people how to live. Okay, you're doing the same to me, sir. That's your problem. Wait a second, wait a second. Hold on, hold on. When you tell, when you tell someone, I offered you the microphone. I rejected it, so I'm gonna preach. I'm gonna, I know. I offer. Okay, let's peacefully talk. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it. I'm, I'm gonna hold it though, because I'm gonna. It's my microphone. If you had your microphone and you and you had it created the rules. Listen, man. If you had a microphone and you you could make the rules with your here's the law, here's the trust. If you had a microphone, you can make the rules with your microphone, right? And I would respect that. Now it's my microphone, so here are the rules of my microphone. Go ahead. Jesus made it very clear everything that he wanted people to know. He said it in the Bible. He does not need proxies running around to the public telling the public what they themselves think that everybody else should be doing. Everybody should live their own lives to their own heart, and God will make his judgments in heaven when you die. We don't need anybody telling us how to live on earth. It's not true. If that's the case, what are you doing to them? Uh, I think the quote is, judge not, lest ye be judged. What do the next four verses say? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You, quoted, you quoted Matthew 7, 1. Wait a second. Hold on. I'm not stoning anybody. Nobody, everybody's no, alive here. So hold on. Wait a second. You, okay, if it's not for man to judge, why are you judging me? This is hypocrisy. Why are you judging me right now? 
Why are you judging answer me? Answer you're telling me not to judge you. You're judging me. This is hypocrisy. Okay, now it's now it's my turn. I want to address this. Okay, so hold on. I wasn't done with my turn. Well, let me address this, and then we can talk again. We'll take it back and forth. All right, no problem. So he just said he just said judge not lest you be judged. Now wait a second. What do the next four verses say? Okay, I told you you can have the mic again. Jesus says, judge not lest you be judged. And then he says, for with what measure you judge, you shall be judged, ye fool, or ye hypocrite. How can you take the, uh, speck, the, take the speck out of your brother's eye when you yourself have a log in your own eye? First, take the log out of your own eye so that you can help your brother take the speck out of his. We are commanded to judge. We're commanded to judge righteously, not hypocritically. So when somebody says don't judge while they're judging me by saying that, that's a hypocritical judgment. Jesus says in John 7, 24, judge righteous judgment. How many parents here never judge their kids when they do something wrong to try and help them get it right? You judge to help people. That's what we do. We judge to help people. That's what we do. That's the, wis that's the wisdom. We judge to help people. So I'm not against judging. I'm against unrighteous judging. Unrighteous judging means judging against what God says. I'm not against judging. Judge all you want. I'm against unrighteous judging. Unrighteous judging is not permitted by God. Unrighteous judging is judging that where your judgment comes from things that are not found in His wisdom, in the Word. When you're judging based off what society says, that is unrighteous judging. Righteous judgment is based off what Jesus says. So you're going to judge and tell me medical marijuana is a good thing. Medical marijuana, it's medical. It's medical, it's a good thing, yeah. Medical marijuana is a good thing. Pornography is a good thing, yeah, it's a good thing. No, it's not a good thing, my friends. It's terrible. So I'm going to judge to help you that it's terrible. Don't do it. It's going to destroy you. Don't do it. It's sin. The wages of sin is death. It is written. It's terrible. Don't do it. Jesus says, I'm holy. You must like you. Holy. holy people don't partake in sin. Heaven's not for sinners. Hell's for sinners. You're not supposed to stay in sin. That's why Jesus says, go and sin no more. Because the woman's going to give something to say. And Jesus' blood is enough for my sin your sin and for anyone who asks for me. Very true, very true. Let's make, let's add to that because if it says love covers a multitude of sins. What is the love towards God? Jesus says, how do you love God? John 14, 15, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So obedience proves that we love God. Because I can't say I love, anybody can say they love God, but prove it. If you disobey God, you don't love him. No, no, that's not true. That's how you get saved at first. Because Hebrews 5, 9, says that salvation is for those that obey Jesus. Revelation 22, 14 says that those that have the right to eat of the tree of life and go into the new Jerusalem are those that keep Jesus' commandments. Okay, that comes with That's obedience. Trying, Correct. But, but at first, at first, enters, belief is the first step. That is the That's the first step. step. No, it's not the only step. Because if you read the parable of Luke chapter 13, right, but then he died. Because he died, okay? But the longer you stay in life, God expects you to obey. The parable of the fig tree in Luke 13. God says, this tree had not borne any fruit, and it's been three years. So the person wasn't dead immediately after believing. They believed for, in Jesus, but that's all they did. Three years go by, they didn't bear any fruit. Then Jesus steps in, and this is Luke 13, the parable of the fig tree. Jesus says, well, wait a second. Give it one more year, Father. Let me dung it and fertilize it and try to help it. If it doesn't bear fruit in one more year, then you cut it down. So, so as soon as belief is at first, but then after that, we have a responsibility to bear fruit, which is obedience. It's based off obedience. Yeah, like because you, faith without works is dead. That's true. James, how, how do you deal with nothing will ever separate us from the love of God? Not oh, wait a second. Yeah. You know, I, have to I, I can't take one scriptural verse unless it lines up with everything else. Now, that particular verse. There are so many. God didn't choose him. I didn't choose him. God chose him. Oh, you did choose him. No. You chose him back. You chose him back. You have free will. You chose him back. You have free will. You have free will. In fact, Jesus doesn't say everybody's chosen. He says many right. are called, but few are chosen. That's right. Now, now you, have the, you have the choice to choose him. That's why Jesus says, whosoever believes. You have free will, folks. You have free will to accept Jesus or reject him. Now, belief in Jesus is what comes at first. But after you believe in Jesus, immediately you have to start following up. Why does he say count the cost? Why does he say the path to heaven is a narrow road? That means it's hard. But to just believe in him is easy. 
No, he says it's narrow. In fact, he says most people are on the wide path to hell. Jesus says most people on these streets, unfortunately, it's terrible, but it's true, are going to hell. According to Jesus, Matthew 7, 13, and 14, Jesus says few people go to heaven. It's terrible. Few people will go there. Very few people. Can you believe that? Very few people. So you have to be holy, Jesus says. I'm holy, you must be holy, Jesus says. You have to be holy, guys. You have to turn away from the sin. Jesus says to the adulteress, John 8, 11, go and sin no more. That's what he says. Jesus says, go and sin no more. He doesn't say, it's okay, sweetie, my grace is on you. A lot of churches preach this fake grace, fake false grace, fake false hope. Yeah, I am. I am slandering. I'm slandering the bad ones, not the good ones. The good ones preach obedience to God and holiness, or obedience to Jesus. Slander towards evil is a sin. Slander towards Jesus slandered evil. No, it's not misinformation. Go visit a bunch of churches, my friend. I'm bad talking false pastors. That's what God did in Jeremiah chapter 23. God said many pastors aren't feeding my sheep. God said the shepherds in Ezekiel chapter 34 are not going after the lost and feeding my sheep. They, they become wolves. So God slandered, my friend. And I follow my father. He slandered evil. There's the difference right there. He called a spade a spade what it is. That's what God did. That's what my father teaches me to do. I call a spade a spade, my friends. And if you don't want to call a spade a spade, then you have something wrong inside here. You need more wisdom to help you, my friend. Because I used to be like you, and I realized I got humble, and I realized I need Jesus and his wisdom to govern me. And you need to do the same if you haven't already. Hallelujah. So the wisdom of God is to, is to, is to, to obey. To obey Jesus. That's his word. He's the word. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He is the word. So guys... John 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So explain to me why in the beginning it says, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Yes, Jesus is God the Son. It then says in the rest of John chapter 1 that without Jesus, nobody would have been created. He creates the Creator somehow. It's a mystery. But if God was so easily to be understood by my fleshly brain says, I would seriously question if that's the real God. He's all wise. You're not going to understand every single little thing, my friend. You're not. I've got the facts that I need to know. I've got enough evidence that I need to know that Jesus rose from the dead. He's got the Son. He answers my prayers, and I don't deserve it. You want to? You, you have something to say? Hey, man. What facts? I got a lot of facts, man. Give me one fact. Okay, we have 25,000 ancient manuscripts of the New Testament and the Bible that line up within 99% accuracy. You have facts of that he rose from the dead. What facts do I you just, have? I just, I just That's gave. That's manuscript. Okay. That's out of turn. human being wrote. Can I finish? Uh, See, so you want to, you want to ask a question, but you don't want to hear the answer, which tells you're me that you. Not answering it directly. You, you're talking about manuscript. You want me to answer it in five seconds? You know, you're asking a question that I'm maybe takes 30, 40 right. seconds to give a response. To you don't want to listen to the response. Okay, to okay can you, can you, do you really want to listen? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna you start up again. Walk in the one. Yeah, here you go. Um, you can also pick up the phone and call Harvard Bible College. They tell you the same thing. Harvard University. They don't tell you. Oh, no, it's a fairy tale. Harvard acknowledges it, my friend. There's 25,000 ancient manuscripts of the New Testament. You follow reality, but you like scholars. I'm sure you like scholars, except when it comes to proving that Jesus rose from the dead. Suddenly, you don't want to hear that. Yeah, don't be a hypocrite, my friend. We go to Ohio Man. once a year to uh, minister. Oh, yeah. Well, this man has a serious question. Go ahead. It's called uh, ministry school. We send out, uh, you know, the minister to the homeless, you know. Where was the battle of Armageddon? I don't know where. Well, read the Bible. The Bible says after the battle of Armageddon, Jesus, the Messiah is supposed to come. Also, if you read the Old Testament and you read the commentaries, there are two Messiahs. There's a Messiah, Ben Joseph. No, there's not. Oh, that's... You don't know your Hebrew. It says there's a Messiah ben Joseph, the Messiah ben David. Now, the Messiah ben Joseph is supposed to be the one that's a general that fights the battle of Armageddon. He dies in the battle of Armageddon to lead the peace way for the Messiah ben David. If Jesus is the Messiah ben David, how did the Messiah ben David come before the Messiah ben Joseph? And where was the battle of Armageddon? Okay. We've also got 300 prophecies of the Messiah, not two Messiahs, my friend. No, he's got double talk. I have read the Old Testament. No, I don't read it in the Hebrew. He knows. Yeah, okay. 
So, so you're telling me that because we have English translation, suddenly we can't accurately translate the Hebrew into English? With all due respect, sir, give me a break. With all due respect. Don't make English. Aramaic. to Greek. From Greek. Correct. We have the Septuagint. The, the Septuagint. Right. We have the, so, so you're telling me the Septuagint, which is the original Greek from Hebrew translation, actually. It wasn't from Aramaic. But that, that, that translation of the Old Testament suddenly, wait, that's not accurate? Are you telling me that? Is that what you're trying to tell me? No, 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 no. Yeah. No. Yeah. The prophecies of the Messiah, oh, maybe not the oh, word Messiah, maybe not the prophecies of the Messiah, there's 300 of them, sir. There's 300. There are 300. I listened to you. You don't want to hear a response? Am I not allowed to respond? I, I listened to you. I gave you the mic. Now I start responding. Wait a second. Wait a second. You don't have to know Hebrew to know what's in the Bible. Isaiah 54 listen, says it's a plural, it's not a singularity. Sir, it says Anashim. No, it's Anashim. I'm going to continue. Okay, listen, there's 300 prophecies. Uh, I so, so we give God all the glory. We give God all the glory. Listen, there's 300 prophecies of Jesus in the Old Testament, the Messiah. Not 36. There's 300 of them. 36. Read the no, Old Testament. I have read the Old Testament. There's 300 of them. And this is why you're probably Jewish, because you reject all these other prophecies of the Messiah. See? See? You can't, well, you can't argue facts. This is the problem. You, you want to argue something that's, that's a fact. There's 300 prophecies of the Messiah in the Old Testament. Jesus fulfills every single one of them. For example, one of the most prominent prophecies of the, of the Messiah is in Psalm 22. The very first line of Psalm 22 is, Father, Father, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What did Jesus say on the cross? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, why did Jesus say that? If you continue to read Psalm 22, it talks about the crucifixion scene. So, when was crucifixion invented? The very first crucifixion that we have documented was around 519 BC. Yet, yet, this psalm was written 1000 BC. So, we have this invention of, 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 of crucifixion. We have this invention that was prophesied of nearly 500 years before. Who else knows that other than God Almighty? So this is what prophecy is. This is God showing his power of the future. And he makes it happen because he's Almighty God. So, so there are 300 prophecies of the Messiah. And Jesus rose from the dead to prove that he is that Messiah. It also says in another yeah, prophecy that he will be betrayed with 30 pieces of silver. That's another prophecy. I bet you that guy who says he studies Hebrew check that one. Because if he accepted that one, he would have to accept that Jesus Christ indeed was betrayed with 30 pieces of silver by Judas, as the New Testament says in claims. That's what Jesus says. Or that's what the New Testament says. So if you guys really want to want to really talk about the prophecies, you have to get you have to get your facts straight, guys. You don't have to know the Hebrew in order to know the Bible. There's this is the most studied and researched book in history. There's so many scholars that have researched the Bible and translated it. You're telling me every single one of them got it wrong from translating the Hebrew to the Greek to the English? Come on. We have enough knowledge to put people supposedly on the moon, but we don't have enough knowledge to accurately translate Hebrew to Greek to English. Come on. Just because I read the Bible in English doesn't mean I'm going to get wrong. Give me a break. God knows what he's doing. God would not give his word to mankind in just one language. Why did the day of Pentecost happen in Acts chapter 2 and he spoke all the languages? God wants to speak to everybody in all their languages. He doesn't want to just speak to us in Hebrew. See, this is the arrogance of how man thinks some men. Oh, you don't know the Hebrew, therefore you don't know the Bible. Or Greek, no. you don't know the Greek, you don't know the New Testament, because the New Testament was first written in Greek. Yeah, but this, is, this is ridiculous. God spoke to everybody on day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 in all their languages. Why did God do that? Why did he give us the Bible? So that he can have it translated in all the languages? Why did Jesus say when he comes back that the gospel first must be published in all languages? It's in the will of God. So suddenly you're not going to get it accurately because it's published in a different language other than Hebrew? Give me a break. 
God knows what he's doing. You're putting your trust in your fleshly understanding when you say things like that. God knows what he's doing. God knows how to pick the right people, the right people to, 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 to translate his word accurately. And that's why I trust God, not my fleshly understanding. You got to lean on God, not your own understanding, folks. You have to follow him and obey him only. What's that? He delivered me from the gates of hell. Yeah, me too. Amen. He delivered us. Jesus says to he who is delivered, he who the Son delivers, he shall be delivered indeed. We are free in his wisdom, but see, sin brings bondage. Sin. My shirt is bringing up a lot of anger today. My shirt's bringing up a lot of curiosity because a lot of people are trying to, a lot of people don't realize that pornography is adultery. A lot of people don't want to think of pornography as a bad thing because you love to please your flesh. You love pornography because it makes you happy. You love to please your flesh. Yeah, but you don't realize that sin destroys your flesh. My friend, my friend. Just fucking jerk off. Oh man, you don't have to talk like that. No, 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 you don't have to watch that. Language. You can't be out here with one of those. You, you don't. Yes, we can, and you can too. It's a free country. It's freedom of speech. Uh, my permit's the First Amendment. You don't know the Supreme Court rulings, my friend. You don't know the Supreme Court rulings. You don't know the Supreme Court rulings, my friend. You don't follow the Constitution. It's not a public nuisance. You can't take away somebody's free speech, right? Because you're disturbed and offended by it. You, you can say whatever you want, and I can't take your rights away. And I can say whatever I want, and you can't take my rights away. That's what the Constitution says. That's what the Supreme Courts have ruled. Study the court cases, and you'll find out you have the right to be heard. You have the right, and no government entity can take away that right to be heard. So glory to God. That's right. So... So I can say what I want, you can say what you want, and this microphone is open to anybody who wants to have a peaceful discussion. If you want to start swearing or, or getting belligerent, I'm not going to give you the microphone. Uh, but if you want to have a peaceful, kind discussion, as we've been having for hours and hours today with people, hey, I'm all open. Let's talk. Let's have a peaceful discussion. We all can benefit and grow as people and grow in wisdom and knowledge. Let's do that. If anybody has something they want to bring up or talk about or questions, because whatever, I'm happy to give the mic. But if not, I'm going to continue preaching the wisdom of God and how it relates to our society today and what's going on with man today. We have a question. Do you want to talk on the mic? No, I'm okay. Okay. Can you repeat what you said about Hillary Clinton, about how a female is shut from the country? Yes, the Bible does teach us that for a woman uh, to be like a queen or head or ruler over man tends to be a curse. So, uh, no, no, this is, this is what the wisdom of God teaches us. You see, when the devil first came, he deceived the woman. He didn't deceive the man. The Bible talks about the woman being the weaker vessel and that she should be modest keeper of the home. And it's actually a very honorable thing. I actually find feminism to be very dishonorable to women. Feminism is very, what's that? Yes, you have a question. You don't need my permission to record me. We're on public property. Man, I'm all about freedom. You can record me all you want. I can record you all you want. It's public property, no problem. The Constitution is the highest law of the land, not a city ordinance. The city ordinance cannot trump the Constitution. Okay, city ordinance doesn't trump the highest law of the land. The highest law of the land trumps the ordinance. No city can take away your constitutional rights. That is not the highest law of the land. It was never in the Constitution that they thought you would have a Okay, but the Supreme Court, listen, the Supreme Court's, listen, Supreme Court's rule and their rulings become constitutional. When the Supreme Courts have ruled that you have the right to be heard in doing these things, that's what the Supreme Court's rule. That's what makes it constitutional. You gotta study the court cases, my friend. I'm a law-abiding citizen, both of God and of men. No, listen. The word unconstitutional comes from municipalities that make ordinances that are unconstitutional, which is what the Supreme Court rules. They're unconstitutional. So I don't follow uh, ordinances that are unconstitutional. I follow ordinances that are constitutional. I follow the Constitution because our Constitution was founded off the Bible. Study your research. Our Constitution was like totally come from the Bible. 